Episode 307 featuring your two favorite people who probably should have picked a different esport. Hello and welcome. High energy, high octane gameplay here at Tactical Crouch, where we bring you the hottest news, the craziest gossip, and a review of Barbenheimer. Jiska? You think I have time for either of those right now? Fuck that. No. <laughs> and my shit is just starting up for August. Okay. Okay. Work. There's not enough Are you already in, in August when July hasn't even ended yet? Unfortunately, every like every weekend something's like is. I am Cologne has started. After that is uh, Rocket League in my hometown. After that is Gamescom. Um, was another thing. Yeah, I forgot what the other thing was, but it, basically every weekend is just Omega blocked right now, and I'm already like. On, on my on my gums just like crawling please when do you want to have the interview oh of course three three oh like three a.m <laughs> yeah oh uh, yeah of course of course i want to wake up at 6 a.m to do an interview that you'll probably just cancel anyways i love truth, that for truth, you truth be told joe what i cannot tell you what my sleeping schedule is i just don't yeah you're like you're like batman you just you know you sleep when there's a brief 20 minutes, you know, you're just it, like, I feel like I'm back in like basic training with exactly like this, right? We don't have anything for you <laughs> to do. Catch some sleep. It's just like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I hit the mattress and like instantly like pass Isn't that out. Isn't the best though? Yeah. It feel so good where you're just it, like, it would, it would be great if the, the alarm clock wasn't set for 45 minutes later, you know, <laughs> like that would be dope. This is fair. This is fair. It is very weird time there's also a lot like you said a lot going on games games are spinning up we've got a lot of game news just mm -hmm. in the in the woodwork um and there's a lot of just overwatch league news as well and no we're not just gonna harp on you know the the verge report we will probably circle back to that at one point but it will not take up the entire episode we will talk about games we will talk about the massive upset between the atlanta houston debacle mm -hmm. uh what a game what a weekend um i saw the the plat chat title totally agree i think we've had some of the best we've been very blessed with some of the best uh overwatch league broadcasting um in recent sure. memory sure uh, i think it's been fantastic i've had a ton of fun watching and you know if if it's if if it's fireworks this year it we're we're sending it off in a good way oh, so oh. Also, like, I don't know if you try to do your preds. Dude, like, next week is close as shit. Like, there are not many I, games that are very obvious. Yeah, no, these days, it's 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 getting a little, little weird, a little scrunkly dunkly. Uh, I have not. I will probably be doing them at the end of the show with the rest of you. Mm -hmm. So uh, stay tuned. Also, hello, reminder, do your preds. Um, but yeah. There's a lot of stuff in the news, a lot of roster changes, and everybody loves roster moves and what that could represent. So we'll be unpacking that, maybe talking a little X's and O's about the Atlanta Houston game, because I thought there was a lot of interesting stuff there. Mm -hmm. um, maybe doing some hypothetical BSery with the player panel. I'll maybe have some questions for you, because apparently somebody wants to bring bands back. Maybe. Allegedly. Reportedly. Mm -hmm. Um. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but before we get into some of the meat and potatoes of this, uh, episode 307 is brought to you by our beautiful patron producers and our YouTube members. Those being Battle Crab, Refund, Bean, Bronze, Bob, Buhau, Picasso, Lulshin, Porkchop, Sammy. Did I say Picasso? I think I said Picasso. Anyways, Rex Zane, Follow Melon Sugar High, and our YouTube members, Blave Bliss. I always want to say Brave. IMDRW, Brother, Adam L, Ice Angel, Fire Element, Six, and AK. Thank you so much for supporting the show. For 307 episodes, that's still crazy to say. Um, if you can't support us monetarily, which is totally understandable, like, subscribe, share the podcast, download it on iTunes and all that stuff. Spotify, that helps as well to, you know, algorithmically leave a comment, like it. Just, you know, say some dumb things. Talk about your Oppenheimer review. That being said, <clears throat> we have a ton of news to break down. Let's start with the Dynasty. Ben Dame's back. Surprising absolutely nobody. Yeah, Lee Sumin is out. Mm -hmm. Does this matter? I mean, yeah, I think it does. Um, boy played, okay. and that team is weird. It is weird because they're like every time I think that like you can just write them off, 
they kind of just do all right. Because I think I just like through predictions last week, I was just like, ah, yeah, Soul probably loses to Spark. They beat them in a game five scenario. It's like, oh, OK, well, that's crazy. Um, and then they lose to O2 and it's like, OK, that's crazy. Like it, it APAC does feel very gray right now. I think there's a lot of gray to happen in NA, but APAC does feel like a complete toss up at the moment. Agreed. Um other than, you know, the usual suspects. Uh, sure. I think there are like the good teams. I think like Dallas is definitely shaping up. Um Infernal, you know, probably just continues to be the the, the domestic leader. Yeah. Um and yeah, even just like the contender teams, it's like, oh yeah, probably poker face beat Shanghai. And they don't. It's like, oh, okay. And oh yeah, dreamers, even though they made some changes, then maybe they do good. Eh, they don't. And it's like, okay, like Vin Dime, I don't think he necessarily got a super fair shake at Shock. I think we've been pretty open with how we've viewed them. It didn't make a lot of sense. It made a lot of sense on paper, in practice. Nothing seemed cohesive. Maybe there's reasons for that. Maybe you need to stay tuned to the GG Recon YouTube channel to find out why. I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't know that Vin Dame got a fair shake, per se. So it doesn't surprise me that somebody felt, you know, that they could pick him back up. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that he goes back home to Seoul. Um, and yeah, I think it's it'll be kind of interesting to see exactly how that shakes out. I think that that's probably a huge grab for them as we go into playoffs and we go into play ins with, you know, a potential new support here coming up. Um, having somebody that, you know, is, is worth their weight. Having somebody on the roster that can, you know, maybe adapt is uh it's definitely worth it. I don't think that Lee Suman was like all that bad. I have, uh, I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't like fine tooth comb a lot of dynasty VODs, but when I did, it, he didn't seem like a complete, you know, liability. He didn't seem like he was completely, it was just kind of a non factor. And that's okay sometimes. It's not necessarily bad, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. I think like we will see what Vin Dame's worth. He looked pretty ass, to be honest, this season, but. It could also just, like, again, I talked to Krusty, mm -hmm. and it just sounded like it's a stylistic mismatch between uh, folks. Um, and sometimes that doesn't mean the player's bad. That sometimes yeah. just means it's it's a misalignment of uh, energy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that was it just from their, their few couple games for the Shock. Uh, the first half of the season, it definitely felt like something was not gelling. So, yeah, I'm I'm willing to give Vin Dame another shout. Um, give him a second chance. Um, and yeah, Dynasty, I think they've got something under the hood there. Um, there there's something going on there. I did I do think did they not lose? Yeah, they lost to O2 Blast and then Profit, the Profit, you know, not Revenue, PH, not F, you know, mm. Little Profit, Little P. Um, did get the win over his former team, which I thought was actually it was actually a really close game. Like, ironically, very there's good. just actually no shot you should be losing to this Ultra Blast team, though. No, no, and that's that's where it's like, okay, does it matter if you land a a decent enough? Maybe it's a stylistic fit for the dynasty. Who knows? But like that that is a team that should not be losing to O2 Blast. A, a, you know, a, a contenders team first and foremost, but a team that ejected nearly all of their talent. All of them, right? Pretty much. I won't say all of them until I look at Liquipedia here. Who are you, Join? Knife Leaves. Top Dragon Proud Attack Leave. Irony Leaves. Yep. If not all of them, 90% of them. Most of them have left, which is shocking. I did not think that O2 was going to be as good as they're doing now. Mm -hmm. um, after basically real building rebuilding the entire roster right like that's 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 crazy that's nuts to me um and i think that speaks to like some serious like you know roster health problems um in, in apac that they're this competitive just rebuilding a team like that's not good not a good thing but lost ray just looks so lost dude like it's just yeah. ass like profit yeah. really tried a lot it just wasn't enough it's it's a like 
I respect the dynasty that they try to rebuild something there, especially mm -hmm. like in terms of the legacy of their, um, you know, gold candidate and whatnot. Sure. Yeah. It felt like Prophet had a hard time in the first half um, mentally. They now have restructured meaningfully, but uh, I don't know if there's no better main tank player than Berlosria in that region, dude. It and it's and it's difficult for me to say this about APAC because it's I think it's already hard enough for like NA teams to like swallow the bullet, and it's probably even harder because APAC is just so dive pilled. But I think Dynasty, if they were to have started scrimming something more stylistic, like months yes. ago with Void, I think they look infinitely better. Are they the best team? No. But they're beating O2. They're beating Dreamers. They're beating Poker Face. Yeah. To be fair, it's, it doesn't... I don't know. Like, it's, it's not like there's an obvious composition that allows Profit to carry and also puts you off monkey. I think that's yeah. relatively hard to find at, at the moment. And um, if there's a solution, it probably mostly means that Belosria has to deliver, and that's not great. Like, you know, some folks find solutions with Brawl. We'll eventually talk about London. Um, yeah. You want to talk about London, and you want to talk about, like, the compositions, and it's there is nothing easy about it mm -hmm. there's a lot there's nothing easy about it but i do think that like even some of the matches that we have seen from na recently there are some vectors that you can attack it's probably a little bit difficult in apac to kind of see those possibilities mm -hmm. you know with like london running a lot of the rhine and like some of the ram rush stuff being viable and now you used to have a team like houston playing a weird amount of like junker queen on like oasis which is kind of funky and we'll get to that um a little bit of ball you know there there is other stuff to be played to kind of integrate void in and keep bellus Rhea like on heroes that he does feel very confident when we saw dynasty do well it was him not on monkey necessarily right you go back to like the the opening week of the year um i think it was the opening week um them versus infernal right where they they i don't think it was a reverse sweep but they like upset them on land and it was kind of like you know infernal kind of pooping their pants on stage a little bit and, and at least part of that especially in map five was bellus ray on like doomfist and ball like stuff that does feel a little bit more within his wheelhouse especially going into like last season with him on philly because I thought his ball was actually really, really clean. Mm -hmm. um, getting him back on those heroes, I think, is probably going to like suit them in the long run. The issue is that I don't know that you can start doing that now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, probably not worth it. Probably very likely to assume that a lot will change with that patch. That brings in a new game mode and of all things and a new hero. So, um. It's probably not worth it anymore. No, I agree. Yeah, it, it's it's probably a little too late at this point. And that was always something um, not to make this like an infernal, you know. What was it? What was it? I, there was something in Discord that was passed around as like vernacular and I completely miss am misremembering it. It's not facializing. What was it? Do you remember? What? I can't. I don't remember. Anyway, never mind. Um, <laughs> uh like infernal i think the coaching staff and like roston picking the coaching staff that wants to play like more creative overwatch just historically like even going back to like you know 2021 i think maybe even 2020 like philly was always especially with their tenure in apac very very creative very like not an apac team very much felt like a western team trying to cheese people you know open to running like weird stuff like a very peculiar team for the region that I think, you know, benefits them in the long run. Even this year, you know, I don't know how many times I've seen Mag on ball or like Zarya towards the start of the year. Like really, really very interesting team um, to, to share the, the region with, uh, with the dynasty who has been a consummate, just 
your typical APAC, you know, let's run what everybody else is running. Let's not get creative. Um, and, and it kind of is a crying shame that Void, you know, <laughs> exited retirement a little early and really hasn't seen that much playtime. I, I really think that there's a missed opportunity there. And missed opportunity, but yeah, to be fair, yeah. like the meta is also. It is, favorable. yeah. No, it's not favorable at all. But at, like we're seeing in NA at this point, sometimes you just gotta, yeah, just gotta swap off. You just gotta what? say, we're not gonna get every, it. like, it almost doesn't matter. Because every APEC team makes plans. True, true. And all that matters is that you're good in that final meta. 100%, right? yeah. Like, if you win one or two matches more, you just got to win one or two matches right. more in plans. Yeah. Realistically, this is what the format is like. And, you know, which team once was pretty shit? <laughs> and then rolled around playoffs and like made it to the finals. That's true. It's true. One roadhog changed the world. So we'll, we'll see. Gesture be doing the damn thing. He might. He, oh, what's that? It's Gesture's music. He's got a steel chair. He's coming back. Who knows? Anything's possible. Anything's possible. I mean, Vegas is making moves. Speaking of, which I didn't think was possible. I didn't think we were making any more moves for Vegas, but here they are signing finale. Somebody who I thought last year was kind of like not an unsung hero, but somebody who I was like, okay, Finale's like got, he's got some heat. I yeah. thought like he kind of like him in Toronto, him specifically, it felt like it was like an early doom hater for Tracer that I was like, oh dang, like Finale's got something here that he's just like on doom fists really early. Like he's, he's kind of to me at least, I won't say, for the community at large, but he felt like he was actually like on the ball in those like push mirrors. I remember like New Queen Street in particular. I couldn't tell you like a head to head, but maybe may it could have been against Houston last year, um, earlier on, or maybe maybe towards the summer, where Finale just kind of was like on Doomfist's ass constantly and just looking clean with it. And I think this year, um, he's he's only looked. To kind of match that um and i think it makes sense for the roster for the vegas eternal but what does this mean does this really improve them i like again they're still playing on ping this at this point it, i don't know if this is even a play for the future because again we really don't know what the future holds um is this just like a last ditch attempt to try to salvage the season for you yeah i mean if you want to push for making the last, put presumably the last uh, Overwatch League finals, like you just got to get out of the bottom three, right? Like right, yeah. 10th is playing. That's technically still in grasp for this team. And they arguably had some pretty good performances recently. Um, they are playing yeah. Valiant this week. Well, that's winnable. And yeah, it's not self-evident to me that even given Valiant's pretty good form, that this is like an auto win at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I think Knife had a great start to uh, to like being signed. Hundred uh, percent. Yeah. Despite you know having to play from ping. Um, in terms of finale, that's an interesting one. I'm almost not sure if you should just have you know stayed in contenders. Um, but, you know, it's, theoretically speaking, if that also helps with communication and, like, styles and whatnot, yeah, I, I don't hate it. Like, to just try uh, what that does to this team. Yeah, I, I think that there's, there's enough talent between them because I think that, like you said, communication-wise, it definitely, like, you know, I think Dove has a role. I think there are comps that like Vegas probably will run that like feature Dove, uh, but this does seem like a, a a commitment to like either mostly starting a Korean DPS duo for the majority of the time, especially if like this meta solidifies. Even though in NA, it, you know, it could be up for grabs for the most part. Um, it it does build out the roster a little bit. I do agree that like Knife had a fucking heater of a game versus boston kind of almost winning them push on his own right 
in the 23rd and a half hour, just barely, you know, keeping the hope alive. The kid's got talent. Probably deserves to actually be in a live environment on a team. He, I think he'd bring some heat. I do still think that there are... St- I think I agree with you for the most part that the well is like drying up a little bit, but I still think there are some fucking hidden gems in Korea that need to be brought over. It's difficult. Obviously now I'm not saying that anybody can, um, but it, it is a little bit a shame that we haven't seen as many of them brought over. Um, and it's, it's tough. Like you said, if you can just get out of bottom three, then the season is still alive for you. Um, that, like you said, they have Valiant coming up. They have London, which that's getting a little bit out of your hands. It it's not easy. None of this is going to be easy for them, especially playing on Ping. Um, finale does help a little bit, though. If we're going to be completely honest, it helps a little bit. So sure. we will have to kind of keep eyes there. Uh, quick coaching rundown for Atlanta. Wizard Young is out seemingly retired as well i believe if i saw that correctly and rascal which i did not even clock or foresee coming um has been there for a little bit apparently the ultimate ring getter what a what an absolute like (laughs) chad you know like if in traditional sports you would probably even give him the first season ring right uh yeah maybe Maybe. I think I still I, there's there's a part of me that would love to go back and like tweak history a little bit just to see what London really looks like if they kept it all together. Because it it was just like a stupid super team that like nobody clocked. Mm-hmm. Um, And then he went and then he left. They they shrunk. Then he goes to Dallas if memory serves. Right. And like kind of yeah. was just a. That was kind of just funky for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and then obviously lands on the shock and does well there. But um, yeah, no, Rascal, uh, a perennial nearly there, does have a ring, right? Does he? Am I- he has two rings. Does he? As a player. And then. Like, I know he has. And then he has. I know he has at least. Oh, he has a coach. Yeah. No, that's fair. Huh. He has three rings, legit. He's about to get his fourth, and if you count London <laughs> and fifth, Moon somehow made like the only rascal-less run. It's crazy. I just got caught up on like his his <laughs> his past on like Kong Do, where like he didn't win anything, and I'm like, oh, well, does he won? Yeah, he's won. He has won. That is fair. Yeah. Um. No, I think it's uh. He's been around long enough. I would have to trust that he. That dude knows. said, "Fuck a Kongdu curse." I'm getting all the trophies, dude. All he, of he, them. <laughs> he's collecting the fucking rings of power, and he's gonna. I'm trying to think of all the Marvel tie-ins I can, and dude, I can't think of any. If you if you grant him the first season, which you uh-huh. may not, but for the sake of the you can't. Argument, How can you? For the sake of the argument. <laughs> And then you also say that everyone's season one was their rookie, yeah? Rascal walked the royal road until season four. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm very... stretching to make the point. <laughs> I'm stretching so I, far. I am, you know, sympathetic to that. I There is a part of me that loves that. Um, but yeah, no, you can't. I would, again, I would have loved to see what, like, bird ring prophet rascal as like a trio looks like yeah maybe one of the best of all time period the end just throughout the history of overwatch um but yeah london season one that was a i was a hope and a prayer eh, Jack? yeah still got it across the line to be fair nope not to anybody's nobody would have expected it well i think maybe people would have been like okay well like if they all play really well and they stop throwing, then they could win. But that's like a huge if. Every that was like the the huge heart attack stipulation for season one playoffs discussion. It was like, okay, London is like the outside if the stars align, maybe. But like uh, it yeah, was just for everyone but me. 
I still remember <laughs> having that discussion. The funny thing is, like, during that first season, like, Sideshow used to have that show, or we mm -hmm. used to have this show, show, show together where we discussed, uh, like, points. And I remember yeah. we had one episode where we fought, like, you know, Philly against London Peaks. Yeah. And that, that and it done then being the final eventually, which was funny, yeah. And it just wasn't close. Yeah, I Ooh, also was, remember like, harder, like being super, super pissed that nobody was recognizing Prophet's greatness, and everyone can eat a fat one for that. And then, like, they gave him zero MVP votes, and then that kid mm -hmm. just dunked on your car pay, and like everyone was mad, and London won as as foretold. Okay, uh, it. Should be fair. Yeah, as foretold. I think it is that you bring up profit a little bit and we're not going to spend too much time. I know audio listeners who are not going to go on a grandiose goat discussion, but it is funny to me. And what kind of underlines this was a couple of like friends reactions last year when the awards were giving out or were given out. That profits only technical regular season award because he did win the T-Mobile MVP for the finals season one. That is true. But for the regular season awards for the last however many years, he has won. For 2022, he got a roll star. That's it. Not in 2019? Yeah. yeah no. Not in 2020? Not yeah. 2021? Yeah, no, motherfuckers are really one. bad at voting. They are really Just atrocious one. at voting, yes. Yeah. On plenty of ballots, but only one vote. Yeah. Or one one actual star. Dude, not I don't know why we like scary. it's it's nuts. Like we're giving to to be fair, it's it's actually not even on the American voter. But I you also damn <laughs> damn sure know you guys can't vote, okay? Well, yeah, you? we we got some bad voters, that's for that's for sure. We we have contributed to a couple of, you know, fraudulent two sleep dart Andes that, you know, walk around possibly with a with a contract race. That's all I'm saying. Where's he coaching now? Boston. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude. That's another one of these characters. This is impossible, dude. Like it's you can't get rid of him. Kareem is a little again. No shade. This is all jokes. This is banter. Kareem is like a little just cockroach. You just can't like he must be so, like the best coach. He must be like the best guy to have around. Because he is just everywhere. Now that dude set the respawn point on the hill and he keeps <laughs> fucking running up the road. <laughs> dude, it's, it's crazy. Can't get rid of him, dude. No. I wouldn't be surprised if like Boston implodes and he just starts playing. Iziaki's like, ah, bro, I'm done. I'm gonna retire. I got military service to do. And here comes Kareem, like, time to get another roll star, boys. Let's get this <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's insane, yeah. No, it is, it is actually insane. Um, also, like, just like, oh yeah, let's let's get a flex support coach mm -hmm. in. Oh, who are your flex support? Two of the Iziaki best flex Twilight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's not a damn thing you can tell me, motherfucker. Kareem was Kareem was out here trying to qualify for Apex while Twilight's like, no, stop, Gamsu. Why are you feeding constantly? <laughs> like he's a grizzled veteran, and here comes Kareem trying to teach him a, a thing or two about the the way the world works. And it's like, bro, I've been playing literally since the start of the universe. Shut up. Kareem's just like to Twilight. Sleep that no. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, World Star. See, World Star. <laughs> this is uh, what a pickup. Oh, what man. a what a fever dream of a pickup. Well, <laughs> what a guy. And the, uh, as we go through this, more and more fever dreams because we have a huge fever dream to get to an APAC. Right. Guangzhou apparently is Dude. just cooking. I don't know what they're cooking. I don't know who's cooking. I don't know who's in the kitchen. Maybe they need to be fired, but they cooking. I mean, they are they're cooking with whatever they find, you know, like <laughs> behind the Duncan, okay, at 10 p.m. This is, this is, I mean, this is completely just, they, like, that herbal life goes crazy, like man. I don't know. There is something Somebody's like behind the scenes that goes very, very wrong in that organization. They're just phoning it in now. They, mm -hmm. um, I think they just like, you know, know what time it is for this league. Yep. They probably um decreased cost doing what they did. Probably, yeah. They 
had bad results anyway um True. after after the midseason where like I, i'm sucks. sorry god it sucks like they were for a time they were looked like the best team in apac yeah and now they boomed to a point where they get farmed <laughs> by like <laughs> contenders teams that are still like have their eggshells on okay like they ju they're just <laughs> they're like still, bored. they still have like egg residue like coming out being hatched dude like it's it is a tragedy. Something behind the scenes there is hundred yeah. percently not working out, and they mm -hmm. blew the team up. Now, I'll also say I'm very close to just like putting in a request into Fleda if we can rename it to the Choice One Deadlift because you motherfucker have have been putting this kid through the Fleda simulator for damn near three years. Okay, yeah. like I I feel like this. This kid, He's got to go home. He has to go home. This kid is probably the most jailed Overwatch League player of all time. This man went to to uh, like solitary confinement while being innocent. Okay, yep. like he's and he was still murking kids. People were trying to jump him. People were trying to give him the smoke in his cell, and he was tying. He was wrapping up newspaper and folding into like clubs and he was just sharpening shanks and he was just wolverine in these bitches like come at me like he still looked good his stats look good guangzhou doesn't look good that is a sign of a good player we've been saying this for god knows seven years at this point the kid pounds this dude he needs to fuck he needs to follow in fleta's footsteps and you know how you know how that works fleta he gets saved He's he's slumming it out in flash lux. He's driving them across the line. He's looking like he has emotional and mental breakdowns live on stage, trying to get this gatekeeper team across a win on a map. Lunatic High says, "Ah, we we finally welcome you. You come to Jesus. Come to come to come to Papa Lunatic High, right? Come to Soul Dynasty as we go into the Overwatch League. Has a decent career there. Choi, he's looking for a team. You've seen the Twitter posts. There's a specific." Soul team that is leading the region that does need a new player, technically. Who's who's the other could. DPS player again? That they have for Prophet who? and for uh, Dynasty. Prophet and Easy Han. Easy. Yeah. And I wasn't even going that way. I was Bro, going Sephiroth, dude. This is not close. This is not. Like, this is not a question <laughs> of integrity or money. This is a question of decency. Okay. <laughs> um. No, like this man has been hard done by for mm -hmm. a hot minute. Um, and honestly, like to, to me, S tier talent. Like, yeah, easily. It's, you put him on a good team and he will perform. 100%. Yeah. And it, to be fair, it is very hard to see where he could land because, like, if it's not. I so, don't think it's that hard. It, there is not, like, there is a lot of overlap with profit. Can you make that work? Um, I don't think he yes. lands with Infernal. I don't think he lands with Spark. I don't la think he lands with... Um, Look, if we're going Dallas. playoff, I don't think he lands with Dallas. Well, I, I don't hate Dallas, but I don't know how... I don't know. That's the big issue is resources, right? We can we can cook up all Give kinds of hypotheticals. Give 30-day, bro. Well, that's what I'm saying is just like, there are teams that could use him. If we're talking about like playoff pictures and we're trying to maximize for the highest possible spike... And we don't know what the meta's going to look like. We don't even know what the fuck game modes are going to play like, let alone what this new hero looks like. Why not? Get rid of Poco. I'm sure you're not, you know, free up some resources there. Get him on a 30 day. See how it works. Sure. Oh, that's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like Dallas, it's a little, you know, <laughs> I can understand how that's harder. Bless you. Um, but no, like Infernal Dallas, has room. Do it. do it. Just do 30. Do a 30 yeah. day. See how it works. Like the the if you make like once again everyone makes it to um to yep. planes anyway, that's yep. the guy that can get you there. Um, and then getting to Toronto mm -hmm. is just the same pretty much, right? Um, yep. Yep. um, two thirty days admin cost four figures is what Eric is saying. That's true. Yeah, it does. I think that's I think that's feasible. Like. I don't think that that's too crazy. I think there are ways that like some of these orgs could finagle it. Like, yeah, are you going like couch surfing Look, and like if we're trying at to find this point, like change? Tell your team to throw because like it's legitimately probably <laughs> saving you money to not have to fly them to Toronto, right? Like, 
I guess. <clears throat> so, isn't that the the end goal though? Is to like get there eventually to sign Choi to eventually get to Toronto and like have a good playoff run. I and... don't know what people's goals are anymore. Like, I mean, that's fair. Char that's fair. Like, I can tell you what charges goals are and. Like none of those involve sure. Toronto. None of those involve going to Toronto, one hundred percent, right? Yeah, I get that. That is that is not lost on me. Um, but if a team like Dallas, if a team like Dynasty, if a team like Infernal were to activate the Choice A One clause in the playoff contract, a la Decay in twenty twenty, um, maybe there's a Cinderella story to be had. That's all I'm saying. Because I don't think the parallels are too, you know, out there. We were kind of talking prior to the show. Is like, okay, when's the last date that somebody could sign like a free agent? I don't know. Just don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it's public. That's a good question. Yeah, like I, I, my the thing is like for Infernal, they just Zest is just that good. Zest is good, a hundred percent. But I don't. And I don't think MN3 has been all that bad. I'm not saying like, oh, this is an upgrade. I'm just saying like to maximize your potential, maximize your chances to getting as deep as you can and trying to win. Right. Choi is a talent you have to have. If only maybe even to take it away from somebody else. Yeah. That's the level of talent that we're talking about right now. Yeah. 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 For sure. Like it's too good to pass up whether or not you use them or not. And I'm sure you could. Let's be honest. Also, like I, I from a from a perspective of just like rounding out the season. Okay, I get Jemmo in. Haha, <laughs> memes. Like yeah, I don't know. Fuck. I mean, like at that point, I don't, I don't even hate it. Like in, if you're just I don't know. sure, go full Chinese. Have a good season. Make some content. Call it a day. Yeah. Call it a call it an esport, right? And just ride off in the sunset. Have a good time. I don't hate that. I get it. I wish more people were had that attitude earlier. Yeah. That's how we sustain this for at least a little bit longer is if we have just some content and some fun shit happening. Like, yeah, of course you're shit. You're never going to be good. Your budget doesn't allow for it. Valiant. Vegas. Yeah, it's, you know, it's crazy it to sense. think the, the, about the where, where this team was in season two. Mm -hmm. the, the blueprints of their infrastructure. The, yeah. The... Um, the venue, yeah, true. Players were walking around, like you know, in Harry Potter Balenciaga cosplay. Um, it was, it was just like they were really, they really took some money in in their hands, and like it showed, right? Like they they won yeah. a stage title in season three, I think, right? Season three, summer season. <clears throat> like that's when when everything just worked out for them, and then like it. They probably had to, you know, look at the financial style back accordingly. I'm sympathetic to that. But yeah, after that, it just went uh, downhill from there. I think um, I think it was admirable to me that they tried to also make Westerners work uh, in, yeah. in that team. That was always like a, a super Neptuno, cool right? like facet of the team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, super international. They, they tried to make it work. It never really worked out that well. Um, but, you know, that was their identity. Like, you could, you, you never knew exactly what the charge were going to cook up coming into the, the, the postseason. Yeah. Um, and it, it made them a little bit affable. They, I don't think they completely maximized on it. Um, at least not in the West. Maybe they did in China. I don't, I don't keep up with Weibo and whatnot. So I don't know. Yeah. You know, but, at your best, you were a great team charge. And I understand you can't. Like, th yeah. that's the reality now. And I won't hold it against you, but like, I don't know. far. Like yeah, I, I you just have to see the contrast and have a moment yeah. of grief about you know. What, oh yeah, what was, it's the state you know? of things. Because like, hundred percent, it would have been amazing to have home stands in Guangzhou. Oh yeah, some of the stuff that like you were talking about way back, like whew. just like that. Honestly, like when I first saw those blueprints, I thought like I didn't think I would see this in esports in my lifetime. Yeah, that was. I was. That really was some like state of the art stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's probably like organizationally, of course. Like, there are always stories that also come to me that are not nice. Mm -hmm. Um, 
about stuff that happened behind the scenes. And of course, there's always some organizational responsibility that should have been taken, specifically around like hiring practices uh, for the team post 2020. Mm. But um, yeah, it's it's unfortunate uh, how this turned out. I think like at their best, Charge were a really fun team from the conception of what this Overwatch franchise could have been. Like they just they were like a a picture like a blueprint for how this could have worked if it yep. if it had a chance in hell of working then this is how right yep. um or at least uh, maybe to rephrase a little bit it would have been an incredible if their vision had a, would have worked for the sea sport mm -hmm. right like that's that's the goal the ultimate goal right they th they thought big and then in the end i mean yeah it's it's just the state of the the current system um hopefully Overwatch in China gets somehow back and then like whoever is behind the, the charge, you know, you don't have to go as big slick, but you know, feel the team, do something yeah. else, right? Whatever if, happens if the, next, it, it they're not like a they're not one of those like in non endemics that like only has the Overwatch stuff. Like Ultra Prime, I believe, is still like a, a team or a brand that is recognized in the LPL and League of Legends in China. Um, I can't comment if they're good, um, but they exist, and I think that like that's some that's a vote of confidence moving into like the future for a little, at least my sake. Um, anybody who's just banked on Overwatch as their esport portfolio is not happy and probably exiting the space very quickly. Um, whereas like people who do have you know more of a feel for things and a feel for like how esports functions, like yeah, I could see maybe. A, a domestic, you know, kind of gutter team that's like affable and makes content. Like whatever happens next, like there's 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 room there, probably, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Could happen. But yes, Guangzhou, it does not look good. Uh Choi obviously out, Jinmu in. Um, fun to see. I think he'll bring quite a quite a few uh, interesting moments as we round out the season. Uh the coaches, Sungwoo and Tai Dala another veteran that i think it just kind of gets passed up a lot um out as well so the coaches are gone uh piggy god bless him tried out ganina captain gaga the one true ball is in what that spells for the guangzhou charge is beyond Up me that's an upgrade i'm sorry also like I, yeah I, I like have to say so. I, I'm sorry. I don't think he's been playing. That, That's the thing is I don't know Piggy, that he's been screaming. Piggy's way too loud for the skill level he has shown throughout his Overwatch career. Like you can be, you can be an asshole like this, but you got to be better as a player in order to afford to have that mouth on you. Mm. Like it, this just feels not that graceful in in terms of and like, and and this is in comment to like some of the, the leaked stuff from, like, a stream that he did, if I'm remembering this correctly. The leaked stuff, the tweets, you know. Okay, like, okay. Um, I haven't seen any tweets, but I did. Kind of when Bruce they lost stuff. and whatnot, like, it's... Ah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Got it. To be yeah. fair, like, like it's... You know. I understand that there's something had to have happened behind the scenes that nobody's happy with. Sure, sure. I still recognize that the other teammates that were also let go have proven at least from what i know i'm not sure what they're messaging on uh their social media platforms but to us they have you know remained calm in the face of the situation put out an lft tweet and you know mm -hmm. pulled ahead so that's probably the smarter choice and yeah. those players especially choice one also better uh as players than Piggy ever was. So, despite what may be a former couple of uh, Houston Outlaws might tell you, Piggy not a great player, unfortunately. On uh, yeah, Sigma. on like, yes, like if if the Overwatch League was played on Sigma, uh, yeah, probably uh, one of the best. Yeah, yeah, but shout outs, but you know, nah, I don't think he could play Diva. I don't think he could play Winston. Uh, they got they did look okay at the start of the year, but uh. Eh. That was that was a a suspicion. 
Was, was that going to last or not? We'll see. Um, so yes, Gongjo is cooking. We don't know exactly what they're cooking, but it probably isn't very good. Weirdly enough, to round out the news week, Los Angeles Gladiators have added Cal at their support line. No, no other changes, from my knowledge. At least not publicly. Bro. And they brought in another player. I don't get it. <laughs> like, I haven't tried to get it yet. <laughs> I haven't had time to get it. No. I just hope they're okay. <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's my honest reaction, because none of this makes sense. Okay. Okay, here. Let me, let me, let me, let me try to make sense of this live on the show, because I know that they just signed a... A sponsor, correct? Yeah, yeah, like some drink, right? Yeah. So they they somehow finesse a sponsor, Doritos. Okay. To get a third Doritos to, to get a third flex. <laughs> they have they have they have they were just like, look, like we can we can make content. We'll just like tweet some things. We'll do like a activation or two. We'll put you in like our our you know uh our Valorant stuff as well but can you just like pay for like the salaries for like a little bit pretty please because we like want to sign this guy but why but that's the thing why do you want to sign another flex support why not a tank that dude is wait what nationality is this guy canadian canadian okay so he's available yeah so he doesn't need a yeah. visa oh maybe you're saving money by not having to get a visa <laughs> no i don't know it's a <laughs> It is a weird one. Um, Such a cynical take. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lasher. We're just going to have to send you home. We got Cal already there at the venue, so he's going to drive us. You... <laughs> <laughs> that, that, would, uh, that would make a lot of sense if you uh, <sighs> made it there. And I'm not sure if they're on course yeah, given the I... week one performance. Like, unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't feel like it. What the fuck is going on in that team? Like, they, <sighs> like I'm sorry, but like... Dude, just from the outside, man, like, it's just like... You can't be losing to Valiant. You're losing to the Valiant, Come then on. you're, like, signing some some Canadian dude uh, to your flex support, support position while you have two flex supports. Yeah! What, what's, what, what's a fan supposed to think? I'm sorry. Like, this is... Are I've you been just good. stacking supports, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you already have three! Like what's cosplay, going bro? on? <laughs> Yeah, I it, none of it makes a ton of sense. Maybe there's some 4D hyperdimensional underwater basket weaving that's going on in you know the 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 purple house. Um, I don't know. It, it it is beyond me, and it hasn't looked good, right? You know, with how kind of inconsistent the shock have looked, um, getting kind of blown out. Granted, I thought they looked okay. I thought shock looked kind of good. Um. That doesn't set the tone well, and then obviously getting reverse swept by Valiant. Yeah, I, I, I just like, and if, then now this. Like, if I had, <laughs> if I had to guess, it's a thirty day. Um, they are el eligible to thirty days because you're only eligible to thirty days after having signed six players. Um, okay. Presumably, like they are currently eight players on the roster, right? Am I counting right? Correctly? Yes, they're eight. So even if one of those supports was going to leave, they still have seven. Mm. Um, so this is the, like it's very possible that this would would be a thirty day. Um, also, like as Eric highlights here, thirty days would cover you until the break, and then you can still make the decision uh, after the patch rolls around, and you have to decide where things are going. Um, I mean, we, we don't know where, where the meta might be trending towards. Maybe you have a du double flex support or maybe you have a double main support lineup. But um, yeah, it's... But you still have Babel and Lastro. Why do you need a third one? I mean, that's... You know the answer to this one, Joe. <laughs> Unless, and if we're not throw, If we're not actively cosplaying the UFC at this point in some of these teams, I, I give up. Yeah. I give up, man. I don't get it. That it, it it is lost on me why you would want to sign a tier two Canadian flex support when you have Babel, who has been a little inconsistent as of late, but I think has been a 
solid on a player. Um, and I don't see that changing until the playoffs. And Astro, who has been a, a you know, a mainstay, main support. Yeah, so. And then you have Astro, who can kind of probably does more than I think people give him credit for. But, I, you know, I, I, I far be it for me. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I, I I think with like what Gravy had said a couple weeks back with like how Marvel, you know, maybe losing Dante was like a bigger deal than, you know, what people are giving him credit for. Um, I think that probably is one of the bigger reasons why they're underperforming. I don't think it's because they need a tier two Canadian flex support. Um, you know, sure. maybe that's. I mean, it's also very fair. unfortunate that like a you have the guy that's on ping, right? Then B, it's like, really? Now you can actually play Ram and like all these other tank heroes. Like, yeah. you're telling me that works now after we got rid of the kid. Like mm -hmm. that, sh that shit just sucks. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's once again, it's rough for everyone. They probably had some. Uh, yeah, I get it. I budgets get it. are probably set. Like this is once again, like this is actually honestly, like I, I was meant, I, I meant to just see what's up and check in. I mm. haven't. And I'm just like TV leaf reading. I think like there's a world where they just had some residual um, budget, budget left. Laying around. And they saw like, because I think it's very easy for us to fall into these patterns of saying, this guy's a flex support. This other guy's a flex support. They do not lead a flex support. When shit like Junbin support happens, Sure. And the reason is simply because of the color or the play style and the temperament, so to speak, of what the team needs. Like, it wasn't immediately obvious to me that Renko and Lugmino would improve a team that previously had been Vin Damon and Finn. But if the style of those players is much, much more suited to <laughs> the other players, so Renko being a much more, like... Um, supportive fl uh, flex support, putting right. way more healing out than someone as aggressive as Finn would do, then mm. like it, it, we, we have to think outside the boxes of the respective roles that these folks inhabit and think yeah. about styles and how important they are uh, in expression to specific comps and how they synergize with other players. And they're like, this is my charitable strongman reading is that while Babel and Lashua are both studs, they simply did not bring to the table what the team needed. Maybe they needed an sure. additional shot caller that helped Kev. Um, and like maybe someone that Ultrex in English or whatever. And even I mean, though yeah. Astro, even though I, I think that would be colored by I Astro. Yeah. But there, there, there could be very there could be a lot of like non malicious, non problematic, non toxic situations that they're just trying to solve. They had some uh, excess budget, you know, like it's not like Stan Kroenke is coming into the office to claim the change from his esports team. He doesn't give a fuck at this point. No, I and obviously like reportedly, um, I believe that, you know, they're pretty much out until they find a buyer, right? Like they're gonna operate until the end of the season and if they don't have a buyer, then they're gonzo, right? Yeah. And now with the, you know, the Verge report and the financial reports, like it's pretty clear that they're out. Yeah. Um, so. so it yeah, it it does seem like they've they've found some budget somewhere um or there have been moves that have not been publicized as of yet uh that frees up this cap space right so it does make sense just play your degree. hearts out guys like okay this is i i i sh like i'm not claiming this as like a lived experience but like having having gone through like the motions of seeing your esports disappear in front of you, even if it eventually came back and probably in a pretty healthy way in terms of WoW Arena, for the mm -hmm. time, it just felt shit to not have sure. done everything, right? Yeah. Um, like I personally was uh, like one of the, on the verge of tournament play players. And in hindsight, there was always this, you know, what if we pushed a little bit more? Um, but also like this is v given your age and everything, 
the fewest of you will will make it in in another esport. You don't know what's coming oh, in the future. Yeah. You have like ten weeks left. Why not? You yeah. already paid for it anyway. Just like realize the there. moment. Leave like the politics or like the the issues that you might have between each other, and just like have a last dance. You won't you won't regret it. I I promise. In a year, you will you will be satisfied with the decision of having overcome whatever like is blocking you. It's not specifically towards the gladiators, but towards all teams. Yeah. That this is the time to move in ways where you don't have regrets after the fact. Try to capitalize on what you got while it's here. Because uh, we do not have any guarantees past December 31st. We have no clue what happens come 2024 for this game. No idea. Yep. And anybody who's claiming to know, they're fucking lying to you. True. They are actively lying through their teeth. There, there are folks um, that have some educated guesses based on who's communicating with you. Sure. Who, but yes. yeah, if if there has been... like. Yeah, the 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 decisions are still up in the air. Like, there's nobody mm -hmm. that can give you a definitive answer. Correct. Like, le legitimately, absolutely nobody has a hundred percent answer. Because I don't even think that like Blizzard knows. Yes, they don't know. The teams don't know. Nobody yeah, knows. I mean, because of the outstanding vote, there's only so much you can plan. You can talk to folks, but um, there are several revisions processes that have to be yeah. abided by, and then. Like yes, you could put your feelers out, but you can't really like set up an, an entire circuit. I, what I love about some of the professionals I've seen talked about is like they just talk about it as business as usual. Like mm -hmm. when when I hear like the off season will be a long one, but like let's prep for it. Blah blah blah. To think of the upcoming period as off season is yeah. admirable from That's my point charitable. of view from my yeah from my doomerism <laughs> point of view but like i'm i'm uh, it's infectious in terms of the energy that this uh, mm -hmm. idea spreads um i'd love to be able to share your optimism about the future of overwatch and what comes after if if this was to go bust um and yeah maybe uh, eventually uh, like i i i agree maybe that we'll see the light who knows Maybe, yeah, I mean, it's it's also just, you know, better for... It's, there's just no reason to be a Duma, really, other than, like... No! Some you just, it is what it is. Like, truth, eh, yeah. it, it goes away. Esports come, they go. Yeah. It, it's been a blessing that it's been around for this long, to be completely honest. Again, like, yeah. not to completely get, like, real deep in the weeds, but we're, we made an esport out of a game that never was supposed to exist. Like, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, it right? is. Yeah. It's nice. The, the story of Overwatch is is crazy. And one day it will be told in its entirety. Um, but today, unfortunately, it's not that day. Um, Yiska. Yep. You produced a piece of content that I think you are rightfully getting a lot of praise for um, yep. in the uh, player panel. Mm -hmm. Not even player panel, but like the coaches panel coming on and talking about, you know, uh, what it means to be a coach. And one aspect in, of that kind of caught my attention. And you kind of like tuned me into this a little bit before you know the public got it um i know that jake was kind of cha not championing but like definitely brought it to the table but hero bands mm -hmm. being brought up again is a very interesting question or topic yep. um not in the way that we saw in 2020 where Zoe's cat god bless is picking yep. gay and we all pog out of our brains and it's not random it's just much like league of legends or a moba you you know you ban a hero um can I get your your general thoughts on that? Obviously, okay. because it was a you know coach panel and you couldn't necessarily interject. So, what do you what do you kind of think about? Okay, so um, I wrote an, a news piece about it. By the way, like uh, it's on GG Recon where you can look up like the specifics of the rule set that uh, Jake proposed. Because uh -huh. hero bands are not hero bands. Like not all hero band systems are created equal, right? Nope. Like it, you could say like we're banning six euros per per map per match, whatever, right? And that would be very heavy-handed. His was actually pretty light, and the mm -hmm. su suggested change was you ban one hero per map, and then in the next map the hero is unbanned, and you can't pick 
uh, band the same hero twice. It, right. The bands have to be done blind before the, um, and submitted with the roster. If both teams ban the same hero, then you only have one band per, for this particular map, okay? Right. Now, the first thing I have to say is, the premise of this is you have a league that plays weekly and is has a propensity to develop stagnant ma the metas by the social fabric of and systems that is in place for your league. Okay. okay. So given Just that standard. you know as the apple tree apples the Overwatch league produces stable mate metas <laughs> Um, for the most part, unless you force teams to not to do that, right? Right. Yeah. So you can do this with balance adjustments. You can do this with breaks, as we see. Sure. It, it is, trust me, it is not a coincidence that we're experiencing meta diversity every time there's a meaningful break for teams to experiment and find, like, invest into what styles can work for them better than the established meta comp, right? right? Like, if if I start out with the goal of wanting to lose weight, okay? Yeah. I look up how to lose weight and then I pick the most frequented, highest rated strategy and then I very quickly find out that that shit doesn't work for me and I refine with time what works for me in order to, you know, arrive at my goal that only is possible like of course like your initial like, like the best thing you can always do is take the wisdom that your environment gives you try that out and then adjust to your own liking because you're unique different and you ought to you know adjust whatever solutions there are to your body your mental your physiology whatever Right now, um, let's say the future was going to be uh, league play, which I don't think it is. Right? Let's just evaluate Jake's band system in the context of the Overwatch League. I actually don't hate it. I don't hate it either. Yeah. So why I think it is feasible is, and I was a hate like a denier of that, but. I think we're slowly, like the path of technology has taken us to the point where players can feasibly be trusted to have developed heuristics in order to play compositions on the fly and like make up for all eventualities. The one thing that I will say is this hero band system would, Im like the, the difference between good and bad teams would be insanity. Oh, yeah. I feel yeah. like only ever like the top three to five teams in like maybe season three, four, five were at all capable of covering more than one style. Yeah. Everyone else just blows at uh, the uh, If anything, it makes the worst teams even worse because you can't like some of the cheesier comps that like allow some of like the, the, the wonder twins of like, you know, London and like Chengdu of like 2019. Mm -hmm. To be able to punch up, we're all predicated on like, oh, here. Mm -hmm. So if you just like neuter them, yeah, then they can't. Like you're you're severely hampered. So, so I think it probably affects lower teams than <clears throat> higher teams, like you said. So this then once again, like this hero band system is therefore only a solution to the problems that the Overwatch League is facing, which is entrenchment of metas given the restraint constraints of competitive play and the scrim practice culture right mm -hmm. change the environment meaning maybe even if you have regular season play but you do it in regional leagues let's say okay europe sure. has a league north america has a league um, right. korea has a league china has a league and then let's say every three months we meet each other for an international tournament immediately this is less required for me why because i actually like that styles and trench per uh region and then they yep. meet internationally and that creates the the flavor of each region and then you can sort of see like which ideas are fat. There, all kinds of stuff right yeah. like 
that that's that's interesting to me, right? Mm -hmm. There, I don't need the hero bands because the diversity are inherent in the system because I've created artificial barriers in how, how people practice within their re respective regions. And meta diversity is almost, maybe not in region, but internationally, is almost guaranteed to be the case, okay? Mm -hmm. um, change the competitive format. Do it something sure. like Apex. The, the the big difference between like Apex and like regular Overwatch League play and why we saw so many set plays like the Meta Athena boosts and whatnot is sure. these motherfuckers had two to three to four weeks to prepare for a single match sometimes. Yep. Right? Like it's very different to practice that than practice for two matches each week for months. Yep. You like the 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 how you it's not always the logical conclusion or the n playing at Nash equilibrium to just go to the matter comp but man like you gotta sympathize with like what like you're just going to sit there like after your execution of the uh, of the non meta comp has been proven that you're not up to snuff and you're just sitting there going well you got three more weeks to qualify for this tournament you have no fucking idea what else you could do and yep. like what what are you going to do beg teams to scrim you f while you trying t like like a blind toddler through the darkness just trying to find something that works for you and hope that the other team doesn't get bored of your shit in, uh, while not helping them at all in practice like of course there's there's some systemic problems with that if the tournament system was very different, right, and the set plays were something desirable, and you could trade tit for tat with like other teams and go like, ah, oh, we have this strategy that where we think that counters their style here and there, shh, and we shh for you while you prep there, and that's very different than three blocks a day. Yeah. Six days a week, everyone knows everyone. Like we share bedrooms, <laughs> and like it's it's very different, right? So, yep. um, it, I think once again, like because Overwatch is such a synergistic and like the system in which Overwatch takes place is so important to what kind of strategies and what kind of gameplay arrives on the server and in the viewers' eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Th those rules need to be adjusted. I think you cannot say that Jake's system blanket always in all s competitive systems produces a better outcome. No, it doesn't. But I do agree that if the Overwatch League, let's say, miracle happens, we vote for another year, right? Sure. I think it's worth a try to see how a band system as light-handed comparatively works yes. out and how that could theoretically facilitate flavor that <laughs> in, in those specific uh, situations. I will say there is a lighter version of the hero bands okay. that for some reason we've forsaken and that was also a talking point which is why the fuck are we not drafting maps always all, all the time? Yes, yeah. That, that's been since... And I hate bringing this up because I know that this is like a very big talking point regarding the future of this game. But I think that's what like a lot of the the early Overwatch, Alien Monthly Melee, Alienware Monthly Melees, a lot of like the uh, Go For stuff. I think there was even I think it might still exist. I think there was like an actual like browser that teams could like log into, and you would just draft maps, you would draft game modes yep. and everything. Yeah, it was it was interesting. Like we got to talk about this, and Gata brought up like a one one example where, like they recently played DC. You know what the first three maps were? Keep in mind, DC a team not necessarily like amazing at uh like Winston comps, right? Sure. Yeah. You know what the first three maps were in their series? Ilios, Gibraltar, and Nubani. <laughs> It's GG, okay? Like, everyone started yeah. laughing in the call where, where everyone's like, yeah, it's bullshit, right? Like, and Gator yeah. is like, yeah, yeah, this is horseshit. Like, of course they're mad. Like, they should be able to pick the second or third map. And then yeah. Gator also said, like, if you're playing uh, uh, against London, why should you not be forced to play yeah. their play, brawl play heavy comps? Yeah, yeah, right? Like, it's it just doesn't make sense. And it's probably only down to facilitating a... Fluent broadcast, but that cannot be the goal. You have to make concessions to 
yes. for the health of the broadcast and for the health of the uh, competitive pro product and also what the viewers see because like you are in and that's why i said like the hero band system is connected to the map band system that's true to an extent right like depending on what kind Some of degree, map you yeah. play you can kind of like pseudo ban yes yeah. pseudo ban like unless you're as crazy as london is and you play <laughs> fucking right sure, on yeah. gibraltar right based <laughs> then like yes there's like an implied situation where like you're taking out viable strategies but as you should right like that's yes. that's the little that's a lighter version of the hero band system that mm -hmm. is already deployed i think at the tournament level i think they're uh loser's choice right yes at that playoffs and and some of the more yes. international competition it is always loser's choice do it everywhere dude like why the yes. hell not i don't that's, know what, yeah I, that's the biggest part like we, we, if 50% of our outcomes are three zeros, yep. this is the fix easiest it. fix, bro. <laughs> like, yep. How is you that not a thing? Right? And then also, no. like... I agree. Th that's another thing where I feel like we're, we're not telling the story of Overwatch enough. Because that, by the way, this is also something that I only got an appreciation for through RD's excellent um, analysis of how map... Uh, performance per team uh, comes into predicting how a match will go. Uh -huh. Like there are absolutely teams that have profiles where they're very strong and on this particular map type yep. beyond the average performance that you think this team has. There are teams that are in the mid tier that are absolutely in the top tier for a certain map type and they yep. probably will take that map of Atlanta if uh, given the choice, right? There yeah. are those situations. We're not talking about them. We're okay. not having them as active, like, think pieces. Okay, wow. Like, th that, theoretically, the fact that we have preset maps should facilitate pre-game talk and narrative building of, like, oh, these maps are coming up. Maybe they can... We're not even using that. No. Nope. Okay. Like, so there is no value here other than, like, the admin going, like, oh, yeah, my switch sheet. Okay, the second one, like, I can already create the lobby <laughs> with them. Like, come on, man. Like, that can't no. be the thing. And, and, I mean, I think you bring up a good point because when it comes to adding another system to this game at the competitive level, um, however I feel about it, which I may get to, um, it does add an element that we can. It adds another lever for the broadcast to pull, uh, whether or not they do oh, it dude, now. It would be Paul. Wouldn't it be? It would be. Dude, yeah, just it would just be. finding it would be out. Super cool. And and we're, and we're going to X, Y, and Z. Oh, we're going to Numbani. Okay, let's see the bands. Winston. Wow. And what? Echo for X, Y, and Z. Damn, that's a target band based on blah blah blah. You know, yep, yep, yep. like instantly yep. have a story there. Now I do understand because this is this is we've had these discussions for a long time, and I did I did understand the counterpoint of like going back to season one, having somebody like Jonak and banning the Zen. It's like okay, True. cool. Now yeah. we get to be robbed of for one map. Keep in mind for right? exactly that's that's the that's the immediate like counter counter is like you it's just for a map. Yep, you just bring it back. Right, and then you go somewhere else with it, and now you get to hate on somebody else's like. I think there's there's so many different ways to like change the format, whether it be like going back to like some kind of not old school, not grassroots. Again, I, these are like buzzwords and jargon that I really want to get away from. I think the tournament structure of like being going through qualifiers, having a break, getting your your schedule of matches and maybe like a double elimination format, maybe even a single elim. Maybe we'll see what happens. But like having a, a a length of time to prepare for matches gives a lot of creativity room. Yes. On top of that, to your point around regional creativity and why band systems may not be needed in the future, any kind of Timmy, any kind of weenie, and yes, Discord, I'm talking about the Captain Weenie himself. It the meta. It's not lost on me that the meta diversified when we separated the regions. When would when did we have the 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 most rigid meta in Overwatch League or Overwatch history? Goats. Goats. 
It was in Bala. It was with every team in attendance. Everybody screamed everybody all in the same location. No shit. Everybody had the same idea. Yes, we got away from it. And Lord knows maybe what happens after this, the summer stage. We don't know because we got roll lock after that because ghosts just wouldn't die. But that I don't I, I you know, you can pillory me and maybe I can be the pariah here, but I don't think goats happens the way that it does if we had diversified regions from the get go. Uh, dude, like you will love like I, I interviewed Krusty. That's one they that one's coming out next week. I asked uh-huh. him specifically if he thought like, you know, n- goats was the Nash equilibrium, like sure. s- strongest. And he had a really dope answer for that, like including Harsha doesn't know goats. <laughs> <laughs> so so you'll see um like it was um i i don't want to you know cunt and cut sure, myself sure, yeah, yeah. too much but um you had a really cool answer i i think generally like during the interview uh there were a lot of things that i now think differently about that really sure. like blew my mind actually like how well everything fell in place with like preconceived notions i had about how, especially mm. this season but um i will say just to also steel man the counter position, which is junk box, where he said, like, I, he, he doesn't want to do that, right? Like, he doesn't want to have that chaos introduced through hero bands. He sure. wants to have a more uh, stable, well-practiced environment where, you know, um, coaches have more impact. Now, I think from a consumer product perspective, yeah, there yeah, are yeah. situations where this is dope, okay, and yeah. it's like some of the dopest moments in Overwatch history actually happened because of this, okay. Yeah, they're not just not frequently. Now, what I'm talking about is something like the Great Bamboozle, the Meta yep. Athena boost, the um, the uh, pirate ship compositions, maybe. Sure, sure. Um, what are the other set plays? I had two others. Before I started this, uh, could we could we striker boost? Is that fair? Striker boost is certainly one. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> the other boosts theoretically, like the mayhem one and whatnot. Like sure, yes, those sure. aren't allowed, but like you know. To be fair, Eichenwald also had a, a very, I think contenders also featured an Eichenwald boost yeah. that got hot fixed, I believe. Yeah. So like this isn't that's not like its own like that people have tried to circumvent the map in a lot of different ways. So look, look, I'll I'll count myself in the corner of um. Of the casual viewer here, if your set play is too nuanced, it can be yeah. as genius as you want. I will miss it. I will have to have a desk analyst sure. three Break days removed from yeah. the match and the emotion explain to my dumbass what you guys did, what that was so revolutionary, right? So I think, unfortunately, this is a game that either like those set plays, we need to facilitate a environment where this happens with frequency and just signal strength, so every kind of one can enjoy it, enjoy it, or it needs to be all heuristics. Your coaching needs to be yeah. all about like making your players better at those um, at those improvised decisions and They're reading the game, and therefore like the 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 game becomes comes chaos. But chaos is also how everyone plays ranked, right? Every yep. hero is represented in in the yes. pro play me- meta, and therefore we reel people in. That those are the, like the in my mind the two conflicting things, right? Yes. Do we do something in Overwatch that like looks hella cool? Nobody ever thought about this. It blows the viewer's mind because they see the tools that they use daily, just like used to perfection and beauty. How how things and plants come together, and there's a very like smart like 4d chess moment in everyone's mind Mm -hmm. or do you just see the ranked experience from a first person point of view played to a much higher level but to a different a a still similar experience to that i could have when i log into uh, my ranked match where i can Mm -hmm. expect someone to play mercy where i can expect someone to play white life weaver where i can expect dive uh, dive tanks to be played with, you know, whatever, right? Like, sure, yeah. They, they are the the chaos. Seeing the broad strokes of order in the chaos and how these people order that—that that is then something 
that I can attach to because I want to improve, because I want to see what's po possible, what I will right. be able, never able to attain. That is not immediately obvious to me if people are playing goats while I'm playing Widowmaker in mm -hmm. season two. Okay. Yep. So um, where's my hero representation? Because let's be honest, you've got maybe two or three, right? Yeah. Where's my hero? Where's the funny hero? Where's my junk rat? You know, it, it, it's. I'll throw this at you. Do you hate either of those options? Either the more like hardcore esports route of like going for the nth degree of refinement or opening up the the entertainment gates and just trying to facilitate a streamlined experience for the casual viewer. Do you hate either? They are so different products. I just sure. I think there. I think the the highly sophisticated team level strategy stuff if you could deliver this at scale and everyone always had like these these cute plays and like the curveballs kept coming and coming maybe not every yeah. match but like every week someone would pull something sure. cool out then I would probably favor that of but course. it yeah, is I very would. unlikely for this to go on forever mm -hmm. so what I would rather I think like what's a fitter solution especially given like w what I just described would probably require a solid amount of coaching staff. It's probably not in, in our future to have those extensively. So I think like, especially at a less, a at a stage where we probably only have um, teams of five, one coach at most at the yep. uh, more something that looks like the contenders level and have that globally and, um, you know, like have that lead into something bigger, possibly, yeah. and have that mirror more the ranked experience is probably going to deliver less high peaks, but more generally attractive gameplay that helps the product be more attractive for. The and uh, unfortunately, they require very different modes of broadcasting. I I agree, but I think we're already primed for one of them, mm -hmm. right? I th it's not lost on me that we we had hero pools, the system, not just like the adjunct jargon that we tend to throw around in esports, right? Like we had a system that would randomize, and this is you know a lot of people forget this was for ranked as well, yeah, for, for just the game, yeah, that we would just remove heroes from the game to try to spice things up. And ironically, Which, I liked it more in ranked than in pro play. <laughs> <laughs> which is fair i don't hate it either i think like it's a shitty way to execute an end goal the end goal being you know to try to make people try different things to try to spice things up to try to get some creativity going it's a really really heavy-handed way to do that but the end goal makes sense this mm -hmm. game is about the funny heroes and seeing the diversity and seeing that everybody is you know all together and Where's the Winston and the Rhine and the Torb and the Sim and everybody's everybody's represented in that way. And you get to the pro level and it's the same stuff. Now, that's OK for me. But is that OK for the audience that has to see the same comp day in, day out? Probably yeah. not. Right. People yeah. could get tired of it. And at this point, we're starting to see year five, six. People are also getting tired at the top level. Where it's like, God, you know, I, I saw a 9K in the in the, the panel, like Nerf Monkey. Yeah. Like, yeah, he needs a nerf. We gotta we gotta do some other things. Cycle we gotta shit, like yeah. spice this up. Yeah. And it, and it's just not coming quickly enough. So you have to kind of give the tools to the players and the coaches at this point. Um, and I agree, it does neuter the coaches to some degree, but I still think there is a level of coaching to yes. helping players read the game. I think that's probably already stuff that coaches have started to be able to, you know, started implementing. Yep. Uh, you know on the fly stuff um but I, I i it's not you know i think overwatch is at its best when you do see a variety of strategies a variety of picks maybe even some pocket picks you know it, i i'm the the identity guy i'm the color guy i'm the fucking you know do the weird cheesy shit guy you know we we need that and it's going to also benefit you competitively to do that right because you can't in your words marry the meta the meta is a gamble in your words right like all of these things have been concepts that we have hammered home yeah. since the days of writing on f fucking medium yeah. right 
and they still are true. Yeah. I'm sorry, Flame. Goats isn't the end all be all. It did attack a, a vulnerability in the game itself, and it was a a, a workaround, a, a backhole, you know, loophole rather uh, to the rules to just I'm just going to exist on the point and you know force you to you know do something. Which okay, you, you whether it's healthy or not, that's up to be debated. But it didn't have to be that way, and that's not just a Blizzard thing. It's a format thing. It's it's a it's so multifaceted. It's not funny. Mm-hmm. So I, I do think that, you know, the broadcast is primed for a direction. I think the entertainment value, I think the the entertainment value is there. I think the audience is also already kind of clued in to be entertained rather than just to be like, I think they want both. But the vast majority would love to see and have narratives built around the pocket pick, the weird pick the the genji main you know the the junk player whatever right and having bands to kind of facilitate that i don't hate that either because again that's just another lever lever to pull on the broadcast that you know you you pair jake system with i think you said it was junk system with the map draft which probably like i agree with everybody that it just should already be a thing and they all agree yeah. And dope yeah i i think that that's just that that's another lever on top of it right because and this was stuff that we had in Apex, and I think like, and, and that's what irritates me when, <laughs> when Sean Miller's talking about like, oh guys, look at the format. It's like Apex. It's like no, you're you're look, you're, you're 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 throwing a coat of paint to, on it and calling it Apex. Like yes, I think <laughs> the the steel man is that they realize this is not the thing that was good about Apex. Yeah. The thing why you say that is to suggest that this, like, bring that spirit back is going to be the way forward in the future, especially if you talk about the importance of, I like, get it. you know, helping the players out that will, you know, whatever comes next. Um, I think but that's it's, the charitable. It's that Kenobi bell curve meme, right? Where it's just like, you you, you, you say that it's about the Apex format, and that's why, you know, it's beloved, and you, you get a scoff, and then you think about it. And then it comes back down to just being like, well, yeah, but there was a lot of things that we didn't like about Apex and you're not going to implement anyway. So <laughs> you're not going to be here. So what's the point? Why? I, like, it's frustrating. I think there are things to glean from Apex. Eric's bringing up like, and I was going to throw this your way and I, and I wrote as much in an article that will be on GG Recon in the future. Um, a much more experimental and heavy handed band system that was featured in the 2020 um, anniversary show match yeah. between Lunatic High and Runaway. Um, which has fallen in the annals of Overwatch history, where uh, it was blind bans, like I think uh, Jake suggested as well. Um, but you ban two DPS, a tank, and a support, and you unban a hero every map. Yeah, this is a little. That's a lot. It's a little dude. much. That's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot, right? It, like that's, but that's to the like that would have been a much more palatable format for 2020 than just completely randomizing things yeah. and trying to just like make that content. Right. Um, I don't, I don't agree with this either. I think it is way too heavy handed. It was a fun idea. Yeah. And I think it got to the, it got closer to the execution level that I think we needed and all that we just never got. Um, so I, I, I think the format can be changed. I think like you said, within regards to like regional play, whatever the future looks like, that could be super exciting and that doesn't necessarily need to facilitate bands because then like the must see, you know, TV is just the international competitions that we see maybe like once or twice a year yeah. where everybody gets together and we get to, we get to test who had the right idea or who has the right players. Right. Well, wow. that's dope. That we don't need bands at that point, but God, God damn it. Can we please just pick the maps? <laughs> Because yeah. hey, like you said, like if, if, insane, if every yeah. other game is just a 3-0, that's, that's just a shitty product. Yeah. 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 If we can just improve the product, then hey, at least at least the baseline's better at that point. Yeah, yeah. You know? For sure. So. All right. But yes, there's there's a lot of insight in that uh, coach's panel. Uh you definitely should check it out. Um I have not completely gone through it, but I thought that was an interesting little uh detour before we get to the pickums. So hopefully that was something worth chewing on. Maybe leave your comment on how you like uh, hero bands, if that's something you'd like to see. Maybe if the ranked experience is what you want to see in the pro pro side of things as well. Who knows? 
Any final thoughts there, Yusuke? Uh, no. Like, once again, um, like, if I see... I, I, I warn you, don't, don't, like, summarize this as, like, X, Y, and Z are four against bands. <laughs> it is has to be adjusted towards, like, the system. Otherwise, the head teacher will, like... Hey, look, you if, if you don't, you don't have, don't characterize him. You can characterize me. I'm for bands. I, I'm, I'm here for bands. Okay. I'll, I'll fight on that hill if I get painted in that corner. But for the most, for the majority of arguments, I am for bands. Um, that being said, let's lighten around some pickums, shall we? We have some games coming up. Mm -hmm. Ones that are not easy to call. Uh, we'll start in APAC. Uh, well, actually, we'll start in NA because it's at the top of the pickums bar. Um, so we've got Glads London after the Glads getting swept reversely uh, by the Valiant. Um, do they have what it takes to beat the London Spitfire? What a fucking unbelievable <laughs> thing to ask me to predict. <laughs> For all I know, this team's coming back and like it could. That's the weird part. They yeah. figured shit out like at the same yeah. time like London is. London's figured shit out too, though. They've they've completely flipped it and been like, you know what? Fuck it. Back to the roots. We're playing Ryan, baby, to the moon. And then they we got also diamond hands. scrim each other a lot, uh, presumably <laughs> because they're both LA teams. And in the because yep. they're, right, like this is a yep. fucking impossible thing to predict. I it's going to map five, and I think like I'm not mad at either. Yeah, I don't hate that. I think there are a lot of worlds. Preference? I see. I think it's a little bit more, and this is just from like my own like values, where I'm like, I love an identifiable team. I love a stylistic team. And last week, it seemed to me that London has again, like you said, they're running fucking Ryan Brawl on Gibraltar. Yeah. The the worst. You could not pick a worse map. Yeah. At least you can run Ryan on defense on Nimbani, right? We saw Mayhem do it. We've seen teams in the past do it. Like, it's not unheard of. You cannot run Ryan. If 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 I load into a rank game and I get a Ryan on attack Gibraltar, I'm I might as well dodge. Yeah. I might as well go play TFT and just sit out a ban, right? Yeah. Especially point P, dude. You, what do you do? Yeah. What do you do yeah. if you get stopped? You you just hope you snowball and roll through. That's yeah. what you hope. Yeah. You hope that you just win fights and you just keep yeah. going. Because if you get stopped, you are fucked. Yeah, no. You, or you're picking sim. You pick point B. Hope <laughs> that you caught the fucking support on the bad yeah, spawn. Yeah. They don't know how the recall mechanic works. And then you can bone them, right? They don't like, have it bound and they can't swap respawn points. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Yeah. yeah. So to me, I like London here and I like it. Pretty convincingly, I I have it going three one London. Um, I like a, I like a stylistic team. I don't like Glad's losing to Valiant. I think that spells some stinky locker room stuff. Um, and I think Chris keeps a keeps a tight ship. So yeah, I've got a London. Okay, I think I got three two Gladiators. Yeah, uh, l let me I'll actually take it. open my my pickums. What I locked <laughs> You're in. You're gonna do them? Okay. <laughs> no, I already already. Oh, you already got them all in. Fraudulent. Okay. <laughs> Not gonna lie, like I like my care meter is pretty low because I missed like three matches at the start of the stage. Yeah, but no. it's always yeah, it always comes down to like, oh fuck, I missed a week. Ah, I can't win. Fuck it, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I I get that. I get that. I'm I'm open to it. Um, um any feeling for Boston Valiant? Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, oh sorry, I'm I'm currently uh in the wrong predictions bracket. Here we go, summer. Summer uh -huh. is what we need. Uh, I have a 3-1. Three, 3-1, one. Three, one? okay. So just flipped from mine. Okay. So, I mean, somebody will be your head. That's fair. I like it. And again, I think Glad's have the punching power to, like, come back and do well. Um, just have to see it. I'll have to see on the day. Oh, sorry. 3-1 London. Oh, okay. So you just, yeah, you agree. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I, I thought you meant already the next match because I have that 3-1 for... Uh, Boston? Boston. Yeah, yeah. I have a 3 0, personally. Okay. Okay. So, don't hate that. Don't have to uh, talk much. Okay. This one, dude, like. I don't hate it. I don't. If if somebody was like, you know, if if the Monkey Prince just is like, you know, if he's still out there, God bless. If he's just riding for Florida still, I mean, I don't. I'm not this mad at season, it. This is this franchise's best season. They're legitimately Easily. probably currently the second best team in the Overwatch League. 
Ah. Uh, well, who else? Houston? I mean, it's either Atlanta or Houston, yeah. They just carved Houston, though, right? Houston just carved Atlanta. Oh, so you're... Okay, I see what you're saying. So you're going, like, transitive. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't hate that either. Like, if you want to argue it that way, I'm not mad at that. And Houston... Uh, it's not self-evident to me that this is an easy uh, Atlanta win either. No, 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 no. Not at all. And, and to be honest, I think as much as I... I think Houston got a little too criticized, and I don't think we'll get to the X's and O's of that match today. We'll see what happens um, in the future. Um, I think Florida might just be a weird stylistic match, especially with like some of the weird kind of kooky stuff that mm. Gravy and Gunbar are cooking up. Hell yeah. um, so that that could be a little concerning for them because I think Dong Hack is starting to look fallible to like a very small degree. Um, so we'll see there. I think that again. I, I honestly think that it could be a 50-50, and I'm actually going to change my prediction to make that a 3-2. Um, but I have to bet on Rain right now. Yeah. It's, it's too hard I not to. I got 3-2 as well. Okay. Yeah, 3-2 let's, Rain. Let's, let's awesome. go through those a little bit quicker, because we like if we also want to do APAC, we're here for hours. Okay. <laughs> true, true. Uh, Titans Justice. Yeah. I don't like this game. <laughs> Dude, these are all hard. This is, uh, it's... I don't like this game, man. I'm, I want to go home. Um, I like Justice. I think Titans yeah. had a, a terrible start to the summer stage. I yeah. think they probably bounced back. I'm gonna say three one Titans. They, I'm get, biased. What three one Titans? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cope. Uh, three one Justice. <laughs> I don't hate that either. To be fair, I think they've they've definitely uh been way better than I think we all expected. Yeah. Uh, Boston Atlanta. I think it's three zero Atlanta personally. Three one for me. I don't hate that. Yeah, if you give them a map, I'm not. I'm charitable. I just don't. I don't see a way for Boston in. I think they just play the same styles. I don't see Boston doing anything kind of like off meta. I think they are just like pound for pound worse at the positions for the most part. Um, and that says something when you look at that support line. Um, okay, it's tough. Joe Vegas Valiant. I have to go Valiant. I'm gonna go three one. I, I mean, I like the moves for the Eternal. Ping is a no go. That's a that's a red flag. That's a I can't do it. That's that's a I'll I'm gonna I'm gonna leave. That's a that's a swipe left. You know, I can't do ping. You're not convinced by their last season's performance? Uh, last week's performance? I think their last week's performance was good. I just don't know if that's consistent. And we'll obviously this we'll see it oh, just today. This is but hard, bro, shit. I, yeah, I've got to go Valiant. Valiant at least chalked up a win. This is going to be close. I had it. It is, it is a toy to eternal, but like, I don't think that's the conservative. Hey, look, if it's a, if we want to manifest a three two win for eternal for the fucking content gods, I'm here for it. I think that's hilarious, and I will be in probably. Well, it's last game, so probably not. Um, I I'm will be going, watching that vod. I'm switching three two valiant, and this is the yeah. Okay, clip me, whatever. <laughs> All right, Florida Justice. I got it 3 1, Florida. 3 2, Florida. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay, a little Justice Love. All right, I like it. Uh, London, Vegas. I got it 3 1. 3 2, London. Ooh. Okay. I, I like Eternal, dude. Like, I, Apparently, in, in knife, of, knife is he. Knife is he. Knife is, I, is, knife is he. Yeah, yeah. He's, that, he's got some gas to him, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, and I, I like. I like finale as well. I just don't like ping. Uh, Glad's Titans. Bro. Nah. Just saying. I think it's it's green or go home. Oh, really? Nah, cope. Yeah. How is that cope? They lost to Valiant. Cope. Um, okay, bro. Tell, sell me on Cal. <laughs> Cal. <laughs> well, you, you haven't seen the other pickup yet. Ori. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, they're getting fat. All right. Um, <laughs> three to Glads for inexplicable reasons. For reasons unbeknownst to, it, yeah, it's to the Ke universe. I am just going to say Kefsta, okay? <laughs> I mean that that is a that is a solid argument. I hate I hate that that's a take, but you can say that. And I, 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 can't I really, really argue with you. I really just think Kefsta Overwatch. What I mean, what what can I say? He saying no. Okay, no, like it's rough. Yeah, no. No. Um, 
locker yeah. is already open. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> that's still Kefsta. Okay. It did, it did look a little rough. That's uh, the first week. So we'll see. Okay. Uh, Infernal East. Dallas. Yeah. Like, uh, 3 1. Infernal? Yes. Um, yeah, I, and this is only 3 1 because this will be held offline and Mac currently has uh, COVID. Ah, uh, okay, okay. That's uh, right. Online, sorry, right. online. It will be held online because Mac has COVID. Right, all right, right. I thought you were going to say something else, but that is true. Um, I agree. I think Infernal probably still is leading that region, and Dallas still has to play a little catch-up. Um, Dreamers Dynasty? That's, that's also hard, I gotta go. Yeah, It is hard because Dynasty is just hyper inconsistent. Um, I'm going to take Dynasty 3-0. Ooh. Real? I'm going no, three, one three one dramas. One. I'm going three one dramas. Really? Yeah. I mean, I don't hate that. Um, but I just I I think I bet on them in week one and they just didn't pay off. So I'm like, I think I'm smoking. I don't know if they... for the next one. I'm not gonna lie. Are you going poker face? No, but three two spark only. Oh I could see it. I could see it. Well, and that's what's crazy is that like Apex meta, like the meta globally really hasn't changed. And like Spark were good. Like, yeah. Uh, but then, I don't, I just don't know what happened. Yeah, it's a weird one. I yeah, do but not get it. You got to give it to Spark, I think. Uh, you have to. Now, yeah. I, I'm telling you, dude, I still have my two like boosts. I, I'm not sure if I'm getting them applied anywhere sensically. Uh, <laughs> Like everyone just seems to like yep. fucking be you know sandbagging spiritually. Um, three one three two dreamers maybe. I'm gonna go. I'll I'll raise you. I'll go three two o oh, two. I didn't hate what I saw. Yeah. I didn't. I I, I hate the fact that this is a brand new team for this stage. Yeah. But the fact that they're already doing halfway decent gives me a little bit of confidence. You're not so. wrong. Like Prophet actually seems to have a chip on his shoulder, and that that dude yeah. is like just like rage, rage hacking basically. Like yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Real talk. I mean, it's a three zero. That's a mega three zero. Okay. Yeah, that's a mollywop. I mean, it'll be fun. 50, I'm sure, 50? Like, okay, that this <laughs> Jesus. Christ. I mean, those are those are those are NA Andes that haven't yeah. been paying attention to anything, and they're just like, well, Guangzhou was good last stage. Dude, this their is, win record. The, these like Church of Jinmu zealots are crazy with it. Okay, and uh, but that's what's crazy is that like anybody who knows Jinmu is like, bro, we have never seen a more coin foot player in Overwatch since like Arhan. <laughs> Like homie can sometimes just rolls up to team fights with a blindfold on and just hits his keyboard. And sometimes it's magical. Sometimes he does some absolutely bonkers shit. I know that like Reddit in the off season was like big. I uh, like on like posting Jinmu clips and everybody's like fucking pogging out of their mind. You guys have to remember that this kid did blade and absolutely nothing half the time. Yep. And just would pull blade and die For half sure. the time or would force Genji and die half the time. Right, like it. He's a weirdo. He's the haha funny guy, and it'll be a fun game, but it's not going to be a good game. Yeah, that's a Dallas win. Uh, three one infernal for me against Pentathera. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, three one spark against dragons. I got three. Okay. I still don't like dragons. I think. That's okay. Um, o two against Pentathera. Uh, I'll go three two o two. Three one. Um, okay. Dynasty against Poker Face. Why am I high? <laughs> Why? Why do I have <laughs> Dynasty winning this one, but not the one against Dreamers? I don't know. Uh, I gotta go Poker Face. Oh. Yeah. I mean, they didn't just lose finale, so that is something you have to take into consideration. Ah, uh, that doesn't matter too much. Um. They have Valentine Victoria, like that's good enough. You know what? I'm switching my prediction from Dreamers. I'm actually giving this one to this series to Dynasty. And then the uh, Dynasty series against Dreamers. To Dynasty. Because Not I Dreamers. can't like I really just think still profit Overwatch, but <laughs> um they like 
there's only 50% of the series that are carryable. True. Like climbing the rank ladder. Just gotta carry the series you can. Hopefully your team doesn't feed. Um, and uh, an APAC toilet bowl for the centuries. Flood a coach versus Jinmu emergency sub. The Guangzhou Charge versus the Shanghai Dragons. <laughs> uh... uh I want to put like one, two, like they tie and they just go, ah, we, we just got to go home, guys. Sorry. Half so of these motherfuckers actually... are already like on TikTok going like, gang, 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 new <laughs> Korea, new Korea. Like, come on. This is. Don't, don't say that. But like Creed and Bebe, they're not NPC streamers. Come on. <laughs> Might as well be. Let's be honest. Gang, gang. Got a ring, though. Got a ring, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just spat over those gross. Um, I'm gonna go dragons because why not? I'll go three one. I go three two dragons, and that <laughs> you, you know what? Here's my prediction this game is worse <laughs> than the toilet bowl in any. It really is gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be worse, but it'll be more fun if Guangzhou plays like I hope they do, where Jinmu and Gaga are just like dive like conjoined twins and they just play like Genji ball constantly. It could be fun, yeah, could be. Who knows. And then they All start right, twerking uh, in front, front of the camera. <laughs> I mean, at this point, would the league find him? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Is, is the guy that does the fighting <laughs> still employed? Like, I'm not sure. That's so mean, but it's the, true. Does the office that where the guy that does the fighting, <laughs> does it still have electricity? <laughs> have the bats already, like, fucking Who moved knows, in and taken man. over? Yeah, I don't know. Miller himself is going to have to come off the top and start dishing out him at this point. Um, that said, uh, that's 307 in the bag. Anything you want to plug? I know you said Krusty's coming up, but uh, what else? All right. So, oh, what, what is this graph? Oh, right. Here we are. Um, my eyes, I actually, I feel like this, this shop makes my eyes look very favorably to in regard, like in comparison to the ones I'm currently sporting. Which are like, you know, the... Oh, those are purposely messed up, too. For audio listeners, it's the classic Yiska red face with the crying eyes emoji that I constantly abuse yeah. in most things. Yeah, but like these... Look at these bags, Joe. Look at this. You seen this? This is... I see them. I'm familiar with them. I, I'm sporting my these own. Are, these are hard-earned, okay? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this... You got your black belt and eye bags? Dude, like... My sleeping schedule has been so fucked. I just kept the blinds down. Like I can get my blinds are so mm -hmm. like um, so shut. There's no sunlight coming through. Right. Like I'm I'm basically living in my own little like, ecological system. You know, like 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 these giant glass bowls with with a cork on top that you don't have to yeah. open. This is basically what I made my. You, you got a little terrarium. Office. You have your own little esports four by four. Is, yeah. I'm just ordering food in. Like then, like a true pro gamer. Like I'm, I'm I got the pitcher back. Okay, I'm I'm drinking diet coke out of a pitcher <laughs> once again. Um, <laughs> like. Yeah, no, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm trying to get as many interviews with, uh, you know, um, yeah. willing folks as possible. Um, I got crusty. That was a dope uh, interview. I felt. Um, I think, like he was really open with with a lot of stuff with me. Mm -hmm. um, that one's going to absolutely slap. One and a half hours, I think we we talked. Okay. Um, about all kinds of things, chalk, team building, uh, the current situation, what his take is on that. Um, and yeah, I, I, one of my favorite interviews for sure. Then tomorrow or rather by the time that you listen to this, the second part of the panel will also be out. Truth be told, I think a couple of points will just be echoed. Another truth you be told, uh, Gator dropped in terms of uh, he had a power outage and then like couldn't get back in time I think 9k dropped briefly as well so like if if you can only invest two hours into Overwatch content per week then definitely catch part one rather than part two mm -hmm. um, and yeah I'm still looking forward to doing more content coming up um, I'm I'll reach out to all the uh, usual suspects. I definitely 
Like if if anyone wants to have me on Glads, I really like to talk about like what their situation has been like uh, throughout the season. Um, I who didn't I catch recently? I think I, it's high time I talked to someone at the Justice. I think they had a phenomenal season for the resources that they had. Uh, Rupal is maybe someone that I should be talking to. I'm sure. just calling out like if if you're listening to this and anyone like the, of the names that I just called out catches of like interests you spam these people on twitter so they accept my uh my request um anyone else you you think would be interesting to talk to i mean i i I was waiting for you to finish to congratulate you on getting like the your like white whale in crusty because i think like that's like the that it really is yeah that's the goat right like that's that's the big brain right um, so that's like super dope, and I'm very excited for you to have that under your belt. Um, is there anybody you know, else? You know who the actual like wide whale of competitive Overwatch is? It's Kefster, dude. <laughs> Never, n- nobody's ever going to get him, but like that's the wild whale. <laughs> okay, this is Nessie, as far as I'm concerned for Overwatch interviews. I mean, sure, maybe. I don't know if that would be a good interview. You could make it one, like yeah, okay. Maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, yeah. The marketing campaign around the kid was that he didn't have a face. Right. True. I don't know. I I, I remember that. Yeah. You know. I, I whatever. Um. Yeah. Is there anybody else that would be cool? I think. I think if you could get Arnold from Genji, I think like he's just very articulate. I think like he brings some like fun ideas. Yeah. Well, could um, have, just given the situation yeah, I right know. now. Um. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Like, keep keep the ideas coming. I'm sure I'm forgetting some obvious ones. Um, that would be very interesting to talk to. And then, yeah, like as as we get closer to playoffs stuff, we're of course ramping up uh, playoffs content a little bit there. Yep. Um, and yeah, that's that's just what what's on my docket. There you go. What about you? All right. Um, I'll put this out here because it has run my uh, my days for the last couple days. Um, but like you, I'm going to uh, try to utilize this as a platform. Um, if you or a loved one has been hurt or affected by the esports winter, um, you may be entitled to a- me asking you some questions or two. Mm. Let's see, um, working on something in that vein. Uh, where it will be, when it will be, I cannot tell you. I do not know. Sure. Um, but that's in the works, whatever it is. Um, and yeah, that's kind of like what I've got going on. Um, I want to get back into the, some of the X and O stuff uh, coming in for playoffs, narrative stuff for playoffs, all that good stuff. We'll uh, we'll try to tell the best story we can um, for potentially the last uh, the last ride, as uh, Eric is so uh, beautifully put up. Can I hope? Can I, I want to. Can you drive the muscle car? I don't like muscle cars. Sure. I want the Supra. All right, cool. All right. Well, that was easy. I thought that was going to be a little bit more painful. I thought you were going to be like, no, I want the car wagon. Um, anyways, I'll, I'll shitty just German. Drive. Huh? I'll just drive whatever. Like, I know like I have to accommodate you not being probably not being capable of driving sticks. So I was just prepared to take them. True. Yeah, I probably I'd probably be pretty butt at driving stick. That's for sure. <laughs> I'd like to learn, though. One of these days. Um, all right. That's enough rambling for us. 307's in the bag. We'll see you next week. Maybe Valiant will win. Who knows? Peace.